Hey y'all, the time is uh, 11, 18 New York local time. It is uh, Thursday, June 22nd, 2023. And uh, in this video, I'm not gonna hide it from y'all. Um, I succumbed to impulse today and I overtraded. I traded outside of my setup, outside of my model. And I uh, blew an apex evaluation account that I had over halfway there. I was very close to passing, and uh, I got the draw wrong, so I, uh, I thought that we were going to draw back down on the NASDAQ to uh, 964 evens. Obviously we didn't do that, we drew up to what I thought in the middle of the day. At some point in the my live trading AM session video today, I even mentioned that I thought we, we might draw up to uh, this New York. Um, AM high that we had uh, at 219 quarters, <clears throat> which of course we did run that uh, after market today. And honestly, we're probably going to come all the way back down uh, and follow my original idea. And a um, couple of things to note. So the reason why I uh, succumbed to my impulses and overtraded the day and traded outside of my model is because last night um, I made a video, and if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you might not be following me on TradingView, but uh, I also post ideas to TradingView. And I saw this move in crude oil before it happened last night. You can go on my TradingView and you can watch my uh, ICT tape reading practice. And throughout the day, to the, throughout the day today, I got overconfident and... Um, thought that because I saw this move in crude oil, I was frustrated that I saw it before it happened, but I didn't participate. I was very frustrated with that. So um, I carried over that frustration and discontent that I saw this move down in crude oil, and I carried it over into my uh, trading today, um, and I traded outside of my setup, and I traded outside of um, the setup times. As you know, my um, my trading setup is ICT's uh, silver bullet model that I'm looking for an inefficiency that price should find between um, <clears throat> 3 to 4 a.m. New York local time, 10 to 11 a.m. New York local time, and 1400 to uh, 1500 New York local time, and then it should go seek, uh, seek liquidity. That is my model. I also use 2000 to 2100 um, for what I call an Asian silver bullet using the same principles that the other silver bullets have. Now, we go down into um, five minute time frame here on the uh, NASDAQ and I actually was in a profitable trade, a short, that was counter to the overall draw uh, that uh, I got overconfident on and didn't take profit and um, so it ran against me and then I and then going in going in after that I just I blew it um, I'm still live obviously on my on my uh, top step account and I'm still live on my own trade station cash account and the resets uh, on just reset on my uh, apex account it's only 50 bucks so it's just $54 um, so the, the lesson that I think that I'm learning from this is a couple of things. Number one, sometimes you're going to tape read things and you're going to be accurate and you're, gonna, you're just not going to be in the move because it's not going to, you're going to be asleep during London. So like, for example, this actually was a London silver bullet here on crude oil and I was asleep and I could have held one contract on and just held it for a 4% move down, but I was asleep during London, so I didn't see it. Um, maybe it even gave you an entry on the Asian silver bullet, but I was asleep during London, so I missed it. And I saw this crude oil move before it happened. You can go on my, you can go on my trading view channel and it's, um, what is the stream? ICT tape reading practice two. I saw this move down in crude oil before it happened, well before it happened. And one of the things about ICT trading, um, that is probably one of the most frustrating aspects of 
ICT trading um, is that you're going to get moves, big moves, right. You're going to see them before they happen, but you might still get blown out of your account before it actually makes the move because these products are very, very leveraged, very, very leveraged. And your prop firm evaluation accounts, you have a very small, you have a very small margin of error. I know that when you're trading an Apex account, I trade the 300k account. It says you have $7,500 of drawdown, folks. It trails you, like it follows you up to $20,000. So it's not a lot. It's not. I promise you, your evaluation firms' loss limits are not a lot. You have to be very good at what you're doing in order to pass them. And when I'm trading the the silver model setup and I'm following my model and I'm looking for an inefficiency during the setup times, I'm very accurate. But when I get impulsive, when I get frustrated, and I, I succumb to my impulses, my accuracy will go down from 70% to lower than that. And, uh, and I'll start, you know, losing. And so um, I, I, guess, I guess the point being is that uh, from this point forward, you know, no matter what, and, and Michael talks about this, and I fell right into it again. Watching another video of his and trying to implement it the very first day that he comes out with it. You've got to have a model. You have to have a model. I know what my model is. I know what my model is. I know when I want to enter the market. I know what I'm looking for when I enter the marketplace. And even when I get the overall draw on liquidity for the day incorrect, like I, I thought that the NASDAQ during the regular trading hours today was going to come back down. I really did. I thought that's what it was going to do Thursday. It's probably going to end up doing that today, Friday. And so I got it one day wrong. And I promise you, one day wrong is enough to blow all of your money. I promise you, you can't just get in these markets and be right a day late. It's not how these markets work. You have to be right right now. And I, I even had a silver bullet that was counter to the draw, and I didn't take my profit. And even, even, this is what's really tough. It actually was one tick away from another silver bullet right here in this candle. And I just fell into my impulses. And I traded outside of my setup time. And it burned me badly, immediately. The feedback with these markets, if your model doesn't work, if you, if you get impulsive, the feedback these markets give you is very fast. You're gonna be, you're gonna know very fast. So, um, I know why I fell into my impulses. I know it's because I didn't participate in this move on crude oil that I saw before it happened. I know that's why I got impulsive today. I know that's why I was taking revenge on the market and it took revenge on me. Um, so, with that being said, um, I'm not here to make this YouTube channel to make you think that trading is is all easy and this is not uh, a battle because uh, it is a battle it's a war it's a war to stick to your model at all times it's a war to stick to what you're looking for in the marketplace no matter what you're seeing in other markets no matter what new stuff Michael comes out with it doesn't mean that I'm not going to I like tape reading and I like you know speculating as to what these markets are going to do well into the future but when it comes to actually trading I have to stick to the model that I'm using it's been successful for me at about a 70 to 75 percent strike rate very good returns um, and it's not a model that I've even mastered yet like I, I usually get shaken out of my really good trades a little bit early I haven't even I, I, I traded outside of the model I got so confident and so frustrated and discontent and impulsive that um, I haven't even mastered the silver bullet model yet and I'm trying to implement all of this stuff. You can't, you can't do that, y'all. Michael, Michael has 30 years of experience. Michael has the ability to trade these markets that you don't and I don't. And I don't have the impulse control to, to control myself and stick to my own rules. And my own rules are that I'm looking for an inefficiency in the four setup times, give or take 15 minutes. I'll paint outside the lines by 15 minutes. And I just didn't have the impulse control today. I was not feeling very good today. 
and uh, it burned me badly, y'all. It burned me very badly. And uh, so my advice to you is if you're watching this, um, find your model, stick to the model, master the model, trade it for years, maybe even your entire life, and master one model, your one setup for life, when you're going to enter the marketplace, what you're looking for, and maybe go on your trading station, paper trade, if you want to really give into your impulses, okay? Maybe, um, I don't know, paper trade, just, but even then, probably not. And if you can't control your impulses, I don't know, up, go read a book, go walk, go to sleep, distract yourself. If you can't, if you're like me and, and you don't have any amount of impulse control, and I don't, then I don't know. I watch YouTube videos, go for a long walk, um, go to sleep, I don't know, go, go away. Wait for what you're looking for in the market. And if it involves having no impulse control, then while you're waiting for the setups that you're waiting that, that that you know that you're waiting to see so if you're trading breaker blocks if you're trading model 2022 they're not going to be there on every single market every day and you're not going to get into every sometimes you're going to see a five percent move down or this was a four percent move down in crude oil in one trading day and i saw it before it happened and i didn't trade it because i was asleep during my setup time and uh by the way, this is the candle that I would have had I been awake and I was looking at crude oil. I would have been in right there because that was that was right at the very close end of London. You know that I allow myself 15 minutes after the setup time to get into a trade. My rules are very simple. I am trading between 2000 to 2100, 0300 to 0400, 1000 to 1100, and 1400 to 1500. Each of those give or take 15 minutes to paint outside the lines, uh, preferably not, but 15 minutes. At that point, I'm looking for an inefficiency, a fair value gap, liquidity void, long wick, volume and balance, any one of those things. Uh, even a regular trading hours gap, new week opening gap or new day gap, any one of Michael's many inefficiencies. I'll go through the list one more time. You could get in on a fair value gap, liquidity void, regular trading hours gap, new day opening gap, new week opening gap, long wick, there's our volume imbalance, and those are pretty much all the inefficiencies that I'm aware of. Those are your entry mechanisms, but they must be during the setup times. And if they are not during the setup time, you don't initiate a trade there. I don't. You do what you want. I don't initiate a trade there. I, I'm allowing myself potentially in the future to scale into positions if I feel like I have a very strong draw on liquidity. But I will never again initiate a trade outside of my four setup times. They have treated me well. I've run up thousands of fake dollars. I've seen 70% strike rate. And I know what it's like now to run up equity. And I'm not, I'm not doing it again. And if I don't have impulse control, then I'm closing my laptop and I'm going away. And I'm going away and I'm taking a drive. I don't know, I'll drive to the next town. I'll, I'll just go drive for an hour just to get the fuck away from my laptop. Because I know what I am looking for. I know when I'm looking for it. And I don't give a fuck if crude oil is moving down. If I see a move and I tape read and that move does, and that move comes to fruition but I didn't participate in it, that's fine. I still call that a win because that means that I'm improving at my tape reading. That means that I'm getting better at calling these markets. But when it comes to actually trading, I know what I'm looking for. And God damn it, I'm not fucking up again. So that's it. That's all I have for you for now. Um, I didn't blow all three of my accounts. I blew one of them. Still alive in uh, two of them, obviously. Um, by the way, Something to note on the Micro Russell, because I wanted to add this in. As you know, I do not have enough money to trade on my TradeStation account outside of um, intraday margins. Oftentimes, though, your PM Silver Bullet, if you see it, oftentimes it will carry over into the next day. That's what that's a pattern that I've noticed. 1400 to 1500 Micro Russell, inefficiency. 
Okay. I'm just going to highlight the portion that the PM traded into. There it was right there. Now, it just so happened that that was also a seek and destroy, and it was also a turtle soup pattern, but I don't give a fuck. I don't care how many of Michael's models one of my silver bullet entries happens to be. I'm not looking for that. But there it was right there. And if I had enough money in my trade station account, which I don't, to hold it over into uh, overnight margins, I could have held on to this for hours and just let this thing run back to where I thought it was drawn because I knew it was drawn down here. And it was, and it is, and it was, and it is. And I could have just held this over resettlement and just let it come, let it come down. I don't have enough money in my account to do that right now. Maybe in a couple weeks if I continue to grind, roll up my equity on my trade station account. And I'm up about $100. So maybe in a week or two, I can, I can hold a PM silver bullet over, the, uh, over, over into the overnight session. Sometimes these silver bullets are going to run into the next session. So your PM silver bullet, for example, might run into the next session. Your London silver bullet might run into the next session. It might run for a long time. So sometimes you might plan on, and, and I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, you don't always know. If you get the draw correct, you know. But if you get the draw and liquidity incorrect, you might end up taking a profitable short-term scalp. So like on NASDAQ, for example, today, I took a silver bullet trade between 10 and 11, and I took it short, and it was actually a counter draw trade. What do I mean by a counter draw trade? Well, the overall draw on the day was, was over here, right, at our Wednesday, 21st of June, New York AM high. That was the overall draw. However, the AM silver bullet that I saw was right here, okay? And I was short here and I didn't cover and I let impulse control and I thought I could paint outside the lines and nope, wrong. So even, let's see, from 2000 to, let's walk out, 2000 to 2100. Let's see if there's an inefficiency in here that price trades back into. Yeah, right there. There was your PM, your Asian silver bullet on NASDAQ was right there. You gotta train your eye to see one model, folks. And no matter how many models Michael comes out with, let Michael use all of his models. I don't need to use all his models. I have one. And one is enough for me. One is enough to run up thousands of dollars of equity. One is enough. But if I disrespect the market and I disrespect his teachings, even Michael will tell you that you should only trade one of his models and master that one model. Michael will tell you that. He just came out with a video saying one setup for life. And it's the setup that you see and that you train yourself to see. And I know what I'm looking for now. And I know when I'm looking for it. And I disrespected the market today, and I, and I disrespected Michael by not following his own advice. Let Michael trade his 81, his 81 entries. I'm not skilled enough, and I don't have enough impulse control. I don't have enough impulse control to trade 81 entry models. He's given me one. I've seen that it's profitable, and I'm sticking to that. So I'm just very disappointed in myself. But... I know why I know why I fell in impulse I, I know why I, I fell into impulse today. I know why. I told you that because I saw a moving crude oil that I didn't participate in. And uh, one of the things I also want to say is that if you if you master, okay, if you start to get really good with Michael's concepts, you're gonna start to run up equity like I have. You're going to run up accounts. Even if they're demo accounts, you'll start to see they'll run up a lot. Way more than you think. And then you'll get overconfident. And then you'll think that you can trade a different model. And then you think, oh, well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, you know, I'll trade a different model. I'll, I'll, uh, I've, got enough, I've got enough money now. I've got enough cushion. No, you don't. Especially not in these evaluation firm accounts. You don't have enough drawdown to do it. You, you haven't mastered all of his models. You master one. That's it. You do not want to be a jack of all trades, master of none. You want to be a master of one. That is it. A master of one model. Pick one of his models that you want to trade. And that's it. I know what mine is. I know exactly what it is. I've described it to you ad nauseum on this channel. And that's what I'm sticking to here forward. So that was that. I hope I don't have to make another video like this. Um, I hope that um, I hope that you find your model, folks. I hope that you find the model in your. 
I hope that you find the model that you're looking for. I hope that it treats you well. I hope that even when you start to learn ICT's concepts and you start to run up equity, that you don't get overconfident, that you don't start disrespecting these markets. Because I'm going to be frank with you, when we were sitting down here and the market was turning down, I wasn't insane for thinking that the draw on liquidity might yet again be lower. I was not crazy for thinking that because at that time, it very much looked like that's what it wanted to do. And of course, that's not what it did. And these markets will do that. The manipulation is real. Okay, Th these markets are automated, but the manipulation is real. Even if you're trading algorithmically, even if you have a very strong understanding of what these trading algorithms are doing, you can still get it wrong. And that's not because the market, that's not because any of my fundamental premises are incorrect. That's because I misinterpreted it. I actually even said during my live AM session, you can go back and listen to it, I said that might be our draw on liquidity right there. I said it. And yet I didn't act on it because I was conflicted when we were sitting right here. I thought it might want to come back down. Okay? Now, Michael will say that this was a regular trading hours gap that obviously price was trading back into. But I'm going to be honest, I didn't, I didn't switch on my regular trading hours. Okay? I missed it because I didn't switch on my regular trading hours. And it was obviously, it was drawing back up into this regular trading hours gap, which also happened to be Wednesday's New York AM session high. But that's not really the model that I'm trading. Okay? I'm not trading the regular trading hours gap primarily. That's not what I'm doing. I'm trading silver bullets. Okay? I'll flip it on the regular trading hours, and if I'm tape reading, I'll notice it. But tape reading is not trading, y'all. Tape reading is, is mastering your tape reading, and it's not the same skill. Master one model. That's it. That's my advice. I'll get back to y'all later. Bye-bye.